Hello, everyone. Dr. Peter Hill has distinguished himself as a scholar and researcher who have excelled and, uh, in the relatively new discipline of psychology of religion. Now, the marriage of, uh, between psychology and religion has frequently been called into question on grounds of incompatibility. Thanks to the faithful work of scholars like Dr. Hill and the Integrationist School of Psychology, the, matrimony, the matrimonial flame of psychology and religion is still burning bright. Dr. Hill proposes that a discernible shift in psychology of religion due to multiculturalism, which I would argue is a child of post-colonialism, provides the opportunity for a closer look at religion as a system of belief and practice. Although psychology has along um, been the phenomenon of uh, taking the phenomenon of religion, religious experience seriously, it has been reluctant to unpack and lay bare its content. The neglected content or substance, as Dr. Hill calls it, of religious belief, according to Hill, provides valuable insight to religious persons' experience of the world. Hill suggests that these substance of religion, religious experience, must not only include the extraordinary religious behavior such as divine healing, glossolalia, dreams and vision, but the ordinary experience as well. Hill contends that psychologists must not only study the behavior of believing subjects, but the substance of their belief. <clears throat> Hill states, Thus, and I quote, it is more than just saying that the person uh, believes in God, but rather how the person knows about God or knows God. This broadening of empirical focus is critical for the field of psychology, uh, and I would suggest in three ways. First, it foregrounds the importance of epistemology of the believing person. And by this, I mean it takes seriously the idea of worldviews. And as a missiologist myself, uh, I, I take this uh, as, a, as an important aspect of culture. And it shapes the way we interact with the substance of religious belief. Second, it introduces the idea of hermeneutics in a specific way into psychological research. By this I mean it looks at the interpretive meaning from the vantage point of the believing subject and not in, not, not, and, and not in the hands of the objective observer. And third, I would argue that it blurs the line between the sacred and the secular, or the notion of religiously infected experience of the ordinary is an important one here. How one makes meaning in the banalities of life is not only religious, but guided by religious teachings and practices. Studying psychology of prayer must not only focus on the behavior of the praying person and the function of prayer as a way of coping with, say, stress or the unknown, but also how the praying person engages and finds meaning through religious texts, teachings, and dogma uh, of their particular faith tradition. According to Hall, how these epistemic substances of religious tradition may provide key insights to understanding how one makes meaning in the midst of ordinary life. It seems logical to me that Hall would draft William James into his religiously inflicted experience of the ordinary project. After all, it was, William, it was James's dynamic functionalism and transactional instrumentalism that calls into question the Cartesian dualism of mind and matter, subject and object, immediate awareness and external world. I would like to return to Hall's uses of James as an interlocker uh, for his thesis later. Methodology is critical for Hall's proposals as, he keenly, as he's keenly aware of his um, discussion of imic and the itic approaches. In studying the experiences and self-perceptions of others, it's quite easy to succumb to essentialist and normative tendencies. Um, tendencies. A solid me methodological approach is critical for measuring meaning and making in religion in general and the thesis of the religious infected, inflected experience of the ordinary more particularly. So in my response in this to this thought-provoking proposal, I would like to provide the following caveats by 
way of locating myself and my own biases. First, I was born and raised in an Afro-British context, a post-colonial context in the 1970s. This, lo this location has not only made me uh, cautious of colonial mindset and hegemony, but also the philosophical and theological foundations upon which they are built. I consider myself a black theologian with a specific interest in indigenization of Christian faith, particularly in a post-colonial black diasporic context. Although my academic journey has allowed me to cross paths with the field of psychology of religion under the broader rubric of religious studies, I have not studied it in any serious depth. Albeit the intersection of philosophy and religion, psychology of religion and theology of religion has always piqued my interest. The other caveat that I feel compelled to confess is that, is that I am a Pentecostal. As a Pentecostal, I have strong biases towards experiences as the important con and contributor to, Christian ex to, to the Christian faith in addition to dogma. The last caveat is that I would like to highlight that although I'm patently, I mean, patently obvious that I am a male raised in a religious and cultural institution that favors males over females, the positive influence of my mother, in addition to my five womanist sisters that kept my male ego in check and taught me to keep to have a, a deep appreciation of God's given contribution of women um, to, the, to the Christian life and faith. My in intentional engagement with women, particularly black women scholars, has also been a source of transformational growth and rich development in my own scholarship and faith. So the first part of my response will engage key terminologies that Hall employs in the development of, the th of his thesis, namely an experiential integration, then the religiously inflected experience, and all, then the idea of the ordinary. I would then go on to engage James as I read James through uh, William James through theological a theological lens as an important scholar for the, this discussion. And this, if there's time, I would like to talk a little bit of my own research, which uh, I doubt very much time will allow. And experiential integration. I would like to begin by taking a closer look at all's notion of an experiential integration. In unpacking the idea of an experiential in integration, Hall highlights the traditional view, which he calls propositional integration, which is based upon the idea that integration must be faithful to what it believes are theologically and scientifically correct. By experiential, all refers to how people live their lives psychologically and theologically, as we, we, we just heard. The idea that a person implicitly employs psychologically and theological principles to better understand their own existence is an important aspect of integration of psychology and religion, albeit what Hall calls folk psychology of religion. By dragging the field of psychology, psychological inquiry from the, from the comfort zone of traditional empirical measurability into the uncharted waters of subjective experience, Hall is indeed embarked on a mini revolution. The idea of studying the phenomena of religion, such as a religious text, songs, prayers, etc., as a way of understanding how people order their lives is certainly not a new one. For example, phenomenologists such as uh, Messiah Eladi long, have long argued that meaning can only be understood cosmogonically, as, and that is cosmogonically, it's not cosmologically. Uh, according as, as creation, which is made possible by temporal experience. Meaning, according to Eliade, uh, depends on the act of interpretation as a recreational or, or discovery of the relation between both historical content and the idea of forms, accident and essence. Eliade fundamentally affirmed the phenomenological principle that there is a necessary continuity between experience and reality. What Hall asserts, however, is that psychology of religion is better placed and more capable in the hands of, um, of psychologists. What I, would, what I like about Hall's uh, notion of the exper experiential integration is its desire to grasp how people live their lives in a way that is unfiltered and propositionally validated by the status quo notion of what is right belief and right practice. 
This, I believe, will provide huge insights for understanding human behavior for the field of psychotherapy, psychoanalysis, psycho psychology, and counseling. In addition to this, the experiential integration approach has a narrow, narrowing effect on the gap between psychology and religion. The life of the mind and soul is the domain of the religious and vice versa, I would argue. I also like the idea, and this won't surprise you as I confess up front my Pentecostal bias, that it reintroduces the value of the experience to the center of the Christian religion. This provides an opportunity to revisit classic works on this subject for our contemporary times, such as Rudolf Otto's idea for the holy and Peter Berger's rumors of angels. So two religiously inflected experiences. I come now to Hall's idea of the religiously inflected experiences. The idea that a person believes in God as a coping strategy or finds the that attachment to God brings about feelings of belonging or undergoes religious conversion, be it hidden or, sl or slow, uh, sudden or slow, to bring about transformation is part of the person, uh, to bring about transformation in part of their personality as being well documented. Hall argues that the functional approach to religion, such as what is outlined above, is inadequate uh, in that the how of belief is equally as critical. The idea of the that we believe and the what we believe dichotomy ties into the to other dichotomies that all mentioned earlier, namely the propositional and the experiential, and the idea of religion as function and substance. What these dichotomies have in common is that they correspond to a broader what I would say platonic, neoplatonic cosmological duality. The platonic philosophy of ideas or forms and materiality or essence has been the basis of Western cosmological epistemology and philosophical thought for centuries. For many non-Western cultures who adhere to various forms of monism, these are false pseudo or pseudo dichotomies. For them, the what of belief occupies the same space as the how of belief. William James makes some of this. Uh, William James made some of his most important philosophical contributions in the last decades of his life, and seems to have drawn similar conclusions about the nature of reality. In a burst of writings in 1904 to 1905, collected essays in the radical in radical empiricalism, he sets out the metaphysical view, most commonly known as neutral monism, according to which there is there is one functional stuff as he calls it, that is neither material or mental. Locating the philosophical trajectory of Hall's approach back to Platonic and Neoplatonic ideas is not meant to have a pejorative influence, but simply to highlight that such approach should not uh, assume um, universal valid validity. I think that the, the white hegemonic uh, normativity that has been that has dominated psychology is something that I would have liked to see in the paper um, accentuate a, a little more. And here I refer to uh, a book on race, uh, uh, race, racism, and psychology by Graham Richards. And I'll move to the ordinary. As uh, the ordinary as a religious experience, Hall focuses on the religious inflected experience of the ordinary, brings to the foreground our understanding of the ordinary as a religious experience. Hall contends that the study of how people make meaning in the, in the midst of the ordinary life will allow psychologists to avoid or deny the importance of the substance of religious belief and experience. All ideas, all's idea of the ordinary could be enhanced and strengthened by the current discussions on, in ordinary theology in the field of practical theology. For example, in his book, Ordinary Theology, Jeff Hashley maintains that the word ordinary relates to the noun order and the verb to order, both which derive um, originally from the Latin ordu or ordinus and the word for row, order, rank, or class, actually 2002. Ordinary translates the Latin orianus, ori ori uh, regular, orderly, or usual, unusual, or oh, sorry, usual. The affirmation of the ordinary life 
understood in terms of the life of production and reproduction, is a feature of Charles Taylor's account, both of Christian spirituality and also of the, on our understanding of what, to, what it means to be human. Taylor argues that our dignity, our sense of ourselves as commanding attitudinal respect is something that is very often ground in our, ex uh, often ground in our ex exercise of everyday, uh, everyday life, perceived as being at the center of the good life. This focus on the ordinary life as the locus of good life is described by Taylor both as a massive feature of modern identity and as originated in Judeo-Christian spirituality, particularly through the theology of reformers and Puritans. It is the emphasis that in it is an emphasis that in principle takes place well beyond the dominance of concerns of a limited theology which is associated uh, associated sense which its associated sense of irrelevance of things secular. Rowan Williams, who was here I think last year in his book on Christian theology lends its support in claiming that the, the that the theologian is always beginning in the middle of things because there is a practice of common life and language already there and the measuring and the meaning of god and the meaning of word god of the word god are to be discovered by watching this community communi watching what this community does not only when it's co consciously reflecting on conceptual ways but when it is acting, educating, inducting, imaging, and worshiping. The highlighting of women's experience by many feminist theologians presents a further variation on the theme by incorporating the celebration of such ordinary experience as friendship, love, sex, embodiment, childbirth, and, uh, and, and nurture. Mary Gray adopts the phrase spatio, yearning as a metaphor for feminist theological education so as to distinguish this education for wisdom from the more utilitarian materialistic approaches. It is a yearning that enables creativity to triumph even in, in the midst of the crush of everyday life. The pattern here is not separation from the chaos and the messiness of ordinary living, but the immersion in it. Hawke calls for the integration to take advantage, integration is to take advantage of engaging the ordinary as a religiously inflected experience will give expression to a variety of religious behavior. William James, excuse me. The work of William James is clearly helpful for all purpose and he points out key references that provide valuable insights for the pursuit of a religiously inflected experience of the ordinary. In his classic Varieties of Religious Experience, Hall notes James' reference to the hot places, the hot place in man's consciousness, the group of ideas to which he devotes himself, from which he works as an habitual center of personal energy. James' work on conversion is fertile soil for the development of Hall's thesis, particularly his ideas on transformation of the self. William James uh, hints at his religious concerns in the earliest essays in The Principles, but they become more explicit in The Will to, Be the Will the Will to Believe and other essays in Popular Philosophy in 1897. Human immortality, two supposed objection to the doctrine in 1898, and the classic varieties of religious experience in 1902, and a pluralistic universe in 1909. The methodology employed by Hall, a religiously inflected experience of the ordinary, is rooted in William James. William James and his student Edwin Starbuck were amongst the early psychologists who studied the psychology um, psychological factors involved in religiousness. Unlike his student Starbuck, James chose not to rely on statistical records for his research. Instead, James used what we may call a phenomenological and interpretive and analytic strategy. Much of James' research 
uh, came from pages of biological, of, of, of a biographical case study account of people's religiously exp religious experience. James analyzed these according to their psychological meaning and validity, used them to illustrate his points made via philosophical analysis. James's idea of the conscious is pertinent to Hall's thesis. For James, conscious life can be described as a field upon which diverse aims triggered by emotional are acted out. James calls the up place in, uh, in a person's consciousness the habitual center of personal energy, as Hall highlights above, highlights, highlighted above. Clearly, as Hall um, points out, James' endorsement and legitimization of the significance of religious conversion is music to the ears of integrationists and certainly provides impetus for Hall's idea of a religiously inflected experience of the ordinary. But I would go further. I, I, I think that William James, not just as a psychologist, but also as a pragmatist, could also come to uh, Hall's um, um, in, in contributing to his thesis. In the last section of Orr's paper, there is, a dis there is discussion, uh, um, he discusses meaning-making and religion. William James, the pragmatist, could have been of further assistance. James first announced his, William James first announced his commitment, and here I see William James through the theological lens, his commitment to, the pra to pragmatism in, in his lectures at Berkeley in 1898, entitled The Philosophical Concept of Practical Results. Later sources of pragmatism were uh, lectures at um, Wellesley College in 1905 and at the Lowell Institute of Columbia University in 1906 and 1907. Pragmatism emerges in James's book as six things, a philosophical temperament, a theory of truth, a theory of meaning, a holistic account of knowledge and a metaphysical view and a method of resolving philosophical disputes. The pragmatism of William James is a powerful argument for the, role, for, the, for the role of human experience in the place of meaning making in a way that protects it from radical subjectivity. Pragmatism final, in the book, Pragmatism in the final chapter on pragmatism and religion Follows uh, James, in, it, it follows James' lines in, variety, in the variety of Christian um, religious in attacking trans, transcendental absolutism for its unverifiable accounts of God and in defending pluralistic and moralistic religion based on human experience. On, pragmat on, pragmatis, on pragmatic principles, James writes if the hypothesis of God's work satisfactorily in the wildest sense of the word is true. In addition to James' pragmatism, his ideas of radical empir empir um, empiricalism um, is also fertile ground for all thesis. James' essay on radical empiricism is a case in point. A posthumous collection, of, um, collection includes James's groundbreaking essay on Pure Experience, originated, originally published in 1904 to 1905. James's fundamental idea is that the mind and matter are both aspects of or structures, um, uh, or, or structures formed from a more fundamental stuff, as he calls it, pure experience, that despite being called experience, is neither mental nor physical. Pure experience, James explains, is the immediate flux of life which, which furnishes the material to our later reflection with its conceptual categories. A that which is not yet an indefinite what, though ready to be all sorts of what. This, I believe, is convincing support for all's admonishment that integrationist psychologists to examine the what of or the substance of religious experience. Meaning making, making and the religious. In the quest for, uh, I'm trying to make sure I'm finished on time because people think just because I'm a Pentecostal, I can't be on time. So <laughs> trying to break the, the mold here. In the quest for religiously inflected experience of the ordinary, Ludwig Wittgenstein's approach is relevant here too. 
as he underscores the importance of taking our lives and our practice seriously. It, it celebrates the ordinary task as the proper, unconfused workforce for language and emphasizes the primacy of every day over the above and specialness of, philosoph of philosophy. As Wittgenstein himself puts it, in the beginning was the deed, meaning it is therefore grounded in something that as public and social as acting. Despite, despite his focus on language, therefore, Wittgenstein insists that language must be seen not just as a form of words, but in terms of contextualized public use that is made of these words. Currently influential understanding of, th of theology that is sympathetic to many of Wittgenstein's concern and therefore open to similar empirical research is post-liberalism. George Lind uh, Lindbeck, Lindbeck attacks liberal experiential revisionist theology for locating the core of religion in, in common pre-reflective religious experience and existential concerns for demoting the status of religious external features, including culture, tradition, and language. Instead, he, as, instead he would have us understand that the Christian religion as a cultural linguistic system and interpret, interpret Christian doctrine as the rules of grammar that is religion. Being religious is to be modeled on a learning and speaking, being religious is to be modeled on learning and speaking a language, speaking a language since a religion can be viewed as a kind of culture, cultural and linguistical, linguistic framework or medium that shapes the entirety of life and thought. So in, in conclusion, I would like to, to conclude by drawing on the par some parallels that provide some insights for Hall's quest for religiously inflected experience of the ordinary. And here I would say that uh, a lot of the research, particularly in non-Western cultures, such as you know, um, African continent, the idea of the ordinary, the sacred and the, and the secular is often blurred. Uh, it will, oftentimes, when you, if you go to places like Ghana or Nigeria or India, you'll find people at their workplace, whether it's in the post office, reading their Bible, uh, and, and there is no place like you, know, you can do religion and, and secularity is often merged together. And I think that's kind of the uh, an imp important aspect to understand how these non-cultures uh, move away from the sort of platonic dualism. Um, for example, uh, I think epistemology is very important here. Epistemology is an important concept for us to, to grapple with in our quest for meaning making. In his 1907 book, Pragmatism, William James writes a chapter on pragmatism and humanism where he states, where he sets out his voluntary, voluntaristic epistemology. And I quote, we carve out Everything, end of quote, James states, just as we carve out constellations to serve our human purposes. Nevertheless, he recognizes, recognizes the insisting um, factors in every experience is truth making, included not only in our present sensations or experiences, but the whole body of our prior belief. James holds neither that we, we create our own truths out of nothing, nor that truth is entirely independent of, human, of humanity. It embraces the humanistic principle. You can't weed out human contribution. He also embraces the metaphysics of the process of, uh, of process in, in, the claim for, in the claim that for pragmatism is still, uh, is still in the making, whereas rationalism, um, rationalism, reality is ready-made and complete from all eternity. And, and I think this time of ready-made rationalism that often is, is the, the underbelly of psychology needs to be troubled. And I think it's difficult to get to a cultural specific um, approach uh, without kind of um, uh, you know, really getting to disrupting some of the epistemolo epistemological foundations um, that it's built upon. So on, for example, in my own research, 
Um, well, I, I was going to come to my own research, but um, I want to just conclude that in my own research, looking at, for example, um, Egyptian and African um, understanding of combining the religion and the ordinary, it provides a lot of insights for how Western psychology could actually kind of not just exist on dualism between what we do and what we uh, believe, but how these things operate together. But I think the idea of a religiously inflected uh, understanding of our experiences is a, is, is a powerful inroad to having a psychology and having a understanding the way we can live more holistically in a divided world. Thank you very much.